Thank you very much for the little introduction. Well, I'm Himani Gar. I'm working with Stephen Uberti, Eniko Kelsveni, and Jilmar Mompia. And today I would like to discuss about the transport properties of particles in elastic turbulent flows. So in my first few slides, I'll give the motivation behind our work. And in further slides, uh, the introduction to the phenomenology of elastic turbulence, and then finally results and the conclusion part. As you know that mixing in small size container is very interesting from research point of view and can be relevant to many industrial applications. For example, bioengineering devices like lab on a chip or cooling of computer chips using fluid flow or mini or micro heat exchangers. But it raises a fundamental question that is how to introduce mixing in these small size containers when it is not possible to increase the Reynolds number. One of the possibility is to resort to the Reynolds, uh, to viscoelastic flows. It has been observed that these viscoelastic flows can introduce nonlinearities in the system, even in the limit of vanishing Reynolds number, by involving another control parameter that is known as Weisenberg number, which accounts for the polymer's elasticity. And these type of nonlinearities can provide us many promising microfluidic applications. A model system which has this type of elastic property is known as elastic turbulence. It was experimentally discovered in 2000 by Victor Steinberg and Alexander Groisma. They choose a very simple geometrical setup in their uh, experiments. It was a rotating disk. The lower disk was kept fixed and the upper was rotating. What they are observed in their experiment with the addition of the polymer, there was the onset of these elastic instabilities and the transition from the laminar to the chaotic random flow. Uh, you can see the snapshot of the flow here. It's not laminar, even when the Reynolds is 0 0.7. We are in a laminar regime, but the flow has some turbulent-like structures. And in this uh, turbulent-like uh, regime, the velocity spectra uh, is uh, characterized with the power law decay with an exponent which is much greater than 3. This is similar to what we observe in high Reynolds turbulent flows. However, the spectra is much steeper. The flow is specially smooth flow. And in their experiments involving different geometries, they observed that elastic turbulence can be proposed as an efficient technique for mixing in microfluidic flows. Also, some of the applications studied, uh, studied recently emphasizes the fact that elastic turbulence can not be only used to enhance mixing in microfluidic channel flows, but can also be used as an efficient heat exchanger or to form emulsifications from immiscible liquids and to extract oil and the gases from the porous structures of the rocks. This is something uh, that interested us a lot. An illustration to such kind of work can be seen as uh, extraction of the shale gas or uh, just sorry, or oil extraction from the porous rocks. What exactly is happening in US? People are extracting the shale gas from the porous rocks, uh, their thin structures. It is not possible by using uh, a laminar flow. So what they do, they use a mixture of water with the polymers. So uh, we are in a regime of the, where we have the onset of the elastic instabilities. So we have the onset of this elastic turbulence, and this way they use, uh, uh, they extract this oil and the gases from this porous rocks. The question of interest here is the absence of the laboratory clean conditions. In the absence of the laboratory clean conditions, there is a presence of uh, solid impurities, sand dust particles, or maybe chemical additives. So the question is, what the point of interest? These impurities may sediment along these thin porous structures of the rocks. As you can see, we have very thin uh, these porous structures. These, particle, these impurities may distribute along these uh, structures and uh, reduce the efficiency of extraction of these gases and the oil. So it is really important and necessary to understand how these solid impurities distribute in elastic turbulent flow. And to achieve this purpose, we study the, direct, uh, the transport of inertial particles by means of DNS of elastic turbulence. And to observe the phenomenology of elastic turbulence numerically, a model was proposed in 2008 by Stefano Berti and collaborators. The model is based on Aldroid B model uh, for viscoelastic fluids uh, with a Kolmogorov forcing and uh, in a, with a periodic boundary conditions. The Kolmogorov forcing here corresponds to a parallel flow. And what do we observe in our numerics that beyond a certain value of Weisenberg number, there is an onset of elastic instabilities. If you look at this instantaneous snapshot of vorticity field in this uh, elastic turbulence regime, the flow is not laminar, even when the Reynolds is 0 0.62. We have some turbulent-like features. And uh, we also show here a velocity spectra, which is characterized by a power law decay, with an exponent greater than 3, which is similar to what we observe in our experiments. Uh, one thing to be keep in mind, as our flow is a specially smooth flow, so we have typically one time scale. 
Our viscoelastic Kolmogorov flow can be characterized by the mean profiles. Here I show you the two profiles which are uh, relevant. Uh, this, uh, just sorry. This, uh, this represents my mean base flow, whereas this profile represents the transversal component of the velocity fluctuations. The important thing that we would like to highlight here, the origin of these fluctuations is purely elastic. There is no inertial effect. So if I do not have polymers in my flow, these fluctuations will be zero. And wherever you see these uh, symbols, it means the averages along the direction of the homogeneity and the time. And please keep uh, in mind these profiles because I'll uh, use them to anticipate my results later on. So now let me allow, uh, allow me to introduce you the dynamics of the impurities, that is inertial particles, I consider in my flow. We consider the heavy inertial particles whose have a density much greater than the density of the fluid. We assume that the particles are spherical in shape and small as compared to the relevant time scale of the flow. So we can make, uh, under these assumptions, one can use this max Rayleigh equations for uh, describing the dynamics of the inertial particles. And uh, here the, we consider only the hydrodynamical drags on the particle, which is known as the Stokes drag, represented by this uh, parameter tau p. And in the simulations, u is coming from the DNS of elastic turbulence. For our result and analysis part, we can make profit of the studies performed in the context of high Reynolds turbulent flows where they studied that the particles uh, can uh, aggregate in certain regions of the flow and the size of these uh, aggregations or these clusters vary from small scales to the large scales. Hence, we have small scale clustering and the large scale clustering. The mechanism behind these two different processes is completely different, but in any case, the parameter which characterizes this clustering is always defined as the ratio between the Stokes track and uh, the uh, relevant time scale of the flow. Generally, what happens in uh, high Reynolds turbulent flows, for small scale clustering, the relevant time scale of the flow is chosen to be the dissipative time scale, whereas for the large scale clustering, it is chosen to be the relevant uh, largest time scale of the flow. But as I told earlier, we are in a scenario, we do not have an uh, error of time scales, we just have one typical time scale of the flow. So for the moment, we decided to fix it uh, as tau gamma dot mean, which is computed from the um, averages of the strain rate. So from here on, I would like to start uh, discussing the results part. First of all, I would like to discuss the small scale clustering. The small scale clustering is uh, due to the dissipative and the chaotic dynamics of the inertial particles. With the evolution of the time, the particles evolves and they tends onto the fractal sets. And these fractal sets can be characterized by many fractal dimensions. Uh, the one we choose here is an easy and simple approach, which is the correlation dimension D2, and thanks to grasberg prokochi algorithm. And what we observe, if you look at this curve, we uh, compute the correlation dimension D2 as a function of Stokes. And we found that the maximum of the uh, fractal clustering, which corresponds to the minimum of D2, occurs around Stokes is equals to 1. And if you look at this colorful, beautiful snapshot, uh, this represents the instantaneous snapshot of the vorticity field, with the, where the black dots represents the instantaneous spatial distribution of the particles. We saw that the particles are uh, aligned along these thin filamentary structures presented in my flow. And uh, here, this snapshot corresponds to the case where we have the maximum clustering, that is uh, this point, where we have their dimension around one. Now the question arises, what happens at large scales and what do we expect? There have been some studies uh, performed in the context of atmospheric boundary layers and uh, ball bounded flows where they observe that at large scales, particles have the tendency to accumulate from high turbulence intensity regions towards the low turbulence intensity regions. And they show that it is a ball, a ball presence phenomenon. But recently, this also has been studied in uh, high Reynolds turbulent Kolmogorov flows, where they show that it uh, can happen also even in the absence of the walls. So we are in a scenario where we do not have walls and we were interested to see if such kind of large scale inhomogeneities are present in our flow or not. There are several possibilities to answer this question. One of the possibility is to look at average density profiles of the particles along the direction of the inhomogeneities of the flow. And in our case, the inhomogeneities are present along the transversal, that is the y direction. We uh, looked for these density profiles for approximately 36 values of the stocks, but I showed here just for two values. And these uh, red dots represents my density profiles along uh, the direction of the inhomogeneities of the flow. 
and we see here yes, there is a presence of large scale inhomogeneities in elastic turbulent flows. And this black, uh, black curve, solid line, this represents a fitting function which was suggested by recent studies done by the LILO in the context of high renal turbulent Kolmogorov flow. So we saw, okay, they fit our data pretty well. And then we looked at turbophoresis from uh, another possibility. Th that is uh, observing the observable key which accounts for the, dist uh, which accounts for the deviations from the uniform distribution of the particles. Uh, this key is a sort of an amplitude and what we observe this key first increases as a function of Stokes and it reaches a maximum value and then it starts decreasing. And again, if you look back uh, to this colorful snapshot of vorticity with the particle distribution over it, what do we observe? That the particles are clustered in certain regions of the flow. Also, they are modulated with a large scale modulation which is twice of our mean flow. If you correctly remember the profiles that I showed you before for the fluid. So what do we understand till now? In our elastic turbulent flows, there is a presence of large scale inhomogeneities. That is the particles are accumulating in our regions where we have less turbulence intensity. So if you look at this profile of transversal velocity fluctuations, so you ex expect that the particles will, uh, more particles will be in the regions where my arrows are pointing. That is the regions where we have less velocity fluctuations. However, the relation between the density profiles and the velocity fluctuations is not so linear. But based on some available theories, we can, uh, they show that uh, they are related with an exponent alpha. We try to see how it fits with our data. So uh, here I show again uh, density profile fitting with uh, this prediction for two different value of the Stokes. And we found they match pretty well for some fractional value of these exponents. However, this uh, uh, pre comparison fits pretty well for the small values of the Stokes. The reason is, as we are increasing the Stokes, we are moving towards Stokes around one. We have the presence of the small scale clustering, which may, uh, because it's dominating, so it resolves the deviations from the uniform, this sinusoidal profile. The one thing that w could be interesting is to know what is the value of this exponent alpha? Is it Stokes dependent or is it constant? What exactly it is? We uh, computed the value of the alpha using uh, least care analysis and we found it is also sort of an amplitude and its behavior is similar to key. And it increases, first increase in Stokes, it reaches a maximum and then it starts decreasing. The question is how to interpret this behavior, can we? The answer is obviously yes. There are several possibilities, either you use a hydrodynamical approach to uh, d uh, find the expression for the alpha or you use a probabilistic approach. So there are some theories available uh, in the context of high renal turbulent flows. I will not go through the derivation part. So we have the expressions for the alpha and there are some improvements which are also validated recently by, uh, by theoretical wave uh, by S. Bellan and they say this is uh, another expression for alpha. And we try to see how it fits with our numerical uh, data. And here are the comparison of these uh, two different predictions with our uh, value of alpha and we see it doesn't fit our data pretty well. Until unless we reshift our uh, this uh, x-axis. Reshifting our x-axis means what? We have to reinterpret our Stokes. Reinterpretation of Stokes means the value of the time scale, relevant time scale that we have chosen, that is tau gamma dot mean, is not the appropriate value of the time scale, which relates to these large scale inhomogeneities. This is an open question and uh, something interesting to investigate. But somehow we had an idea this time scale might be related to the presence of small filamentary structures in our flow. If you uh, look at these uh, snapshots, so we decided to look at the instantaneous snapshot of the strain rate fields. This is the instantaneous snapshot of the strain rate fields. And you see there are the presence of these uh, certain uh, small filamentary structures. These are the regions where the um, strain rate is maximally concentrated. And we also looked at the Y profiles of these instantaneous uh, snapshots of the strain rate field. Uh, if anybody wants, I can show them later on. I do not have in my slides. There we compute that the local time scale varies over the range 0 0.01 to 1, which uh, it makes it very evident that our choice for the tau gamma dot mean, which is based on the average of the strain rate, is not a good approximation. So we have to look for a relevant time scale, which is the most probable value of the tau gamma dot. So we looked at the PDF of tau gamma dot, which is computed by averaging over 85 independent snapshots of the strain rate fields. And we choose the most probable value of this tau gamma dot. 
which corresponds to value 0 0.02 and we represent it as tau gamma dot peak. So now we reinterpret our Stokes based on this new uh, value of this relevant time scale of the flow. And now it's represented by capital ST, which is tau gamma dot uh, tau P divided by tau gamma dot peak. And we looked at our results. They fit pretty well. And we are happy with the results at least. Uh, but there is still more to investigate because uh, this is something we had an idea that there is a presence of these time scales. But there is a large theory devoted to these uh, presence of small filamenty structures that is related to the width of the boundary layers and something. But uh, we are still investigating this question. At last, I would like to uh, discuss the Weisenberg dependency on, uh, for both small and the large scale clustering. And here uh, I represent this computation of D2 for as a function of Stokes for multiple values of Weisenberg number. And we see there is a very weak dependency of this D2 as a function of Weisenberg number. And uh, this maximum of D2 occurs for Stokes around 1. What, uh, what about the large scale clustering? We observe that there is a rather weak dependency when the Weisenberg is large enough. There might be some uh, interesting uh, features at the smaller Weisenberg number near the range where we have this threshold instabilities, but uh, for larger Weizenberg number, it has a very weak dependency. At last, I would like to conclude my work. In our elastic turbulent flows, we have a presence of small scale clustering, which is due to the dissipative and chaotic dynamics of the particles. There is also a presence of the phenomenon turboforesis, which accounts for the large scale inhomogeneities. And this is induced due to the local variations of the turbulent intensity. And the function alpha, as a function of the Stokes, this exponent alpha, can, uh, which accounts for turboforesis can be well described by the theories available in the context of high Reynolds turbulent flows. One thing that I forgot to tell you, uh, that these models are validated only for small particles, not for the large size particles. And there is uh, the maximum of this large and the small scale clustering occurs for similar value of tau p. And there is a very weak Weisenberg dependency for both small and the large scale clustering. In the future, we are uh, willing to s uh, understand or to discuss the quantitatively the disturboforesis for large size particles and if possible also understanding of this polymer statistics along the particle trajectory. Thank you. Yes. This shows that uh, exactly what you uh, spoke here, that the material particle is correlated stochastically, is correlated to the uh, branches to the uh, Kolmogorov time, if not to the Stokes time. And the scales in the distribution are insensitive uh, to the Stokes time. Yes. which gives us these results, yes. I, I also, we found it uh, extremely, the, yes. Uh, the question, uh, uh, whether or not our equation, Stokes equation for the particle is correct, in turbulent flow. Ah. No, 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 it's the rhetoric question. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll try to think about it. Something else? Uh, it's because of the elastic forcing. Oh, okay. As you can see, uh, we have uh, this elastic forcing, which accounts for these uh, turbulent fluctuate like fluctuations in our flow. Yes. Uh, it has something similar feature to Kolmogorov spectra, but not exactly. The flow uh, spectra is much steeper than the Kolmogorov one. That's why we have a specially smooth flow. Uh, it's something similar to bachelor's regime. Yes. How, how can we tell our turbulence? Uh, turbulence, actually, uh, you have a laminar flow when you add polymers. Due to the back stretching of the polymers, you have these uh, turbulent-like streets. It's not inertial. If when you add polymers, they backstretch and they, uh, uh, they uh, back effect on the, due to their back effects on the flow, that's why you have this 
turbulent like features. It's not a turbulent flow, but it's something similar to turbulent flow. 